Hey guys, how you doing out there this fine Saturday afternoon? It looks like fall is finally coming out to California. It's those three days of the year where it's not too hot uh, to paint or too cold to paint. Uh, and you're not dying in the shop and you're not freezing in the shop. So we got three days to get some work done. We are working on the hobo junk pile still. Um, we've got the tuners on with the chick flick teal screws and um, things are looking pretty good. We're getting to the point now where we're going to put sound in this thing, but I've got to get the back done. We'll put a graphic on the back and there's some divots missing and stuff like that, but the more I looked, the more there's some problems here. There's some separation going on. The top is coming off of it. And it's nothing big, but we're going to fix it because if we don't fix it, it's going to turn into a problem later. You see that hole right there? That used to be for a strap button, and I think we're going to fill that up. And I think we are actually going to use a piece of wood that came from a place where Mississippi Fred McDowell was recorded by both Alan Lomax and George Mitchell. Shout out to you, George Mitchell like the pictures of your landscape down there in Florida. I'm actually a plant guy, so the stuff you're posting, I actually get most of it. Anyway, this episode is about some tools and some little gadgets that I think you're going to like. I use them a lot, um, and you know what? Let's just go look at some. I'll introduce them as I go. Don't forget, before the end of the episode, give me a like below. Subscribe if you haven't. And as always, I will give you, if I show you something, you can go uh, down below and click on a link and find this stuff because it's really handy. So, let's get to the band. Hey guys, we did an episode co called Squalid Starburst. I'm going to give you a link up here in which we did this finish. Now, let me get this tail piece off of here. And um, as I told you at the beginning, we're going to go through some tools um, and some tricks, and I guess they call them hacks now, um, th that I use. People have been encouraging me to go through my shop and talk about what kind of equipment I have and what my favorite stuff is and all that. So we'll get some of these little trinkets out of the way that I use pretty regular. Before I forget, the, the ep matchbook of the episode is Rosebud. If you haven't seen Citizen Kane, watch Citizen Kane and uh, listen for my neighbor's super loud truck. I love it when people put $4,000 mufflers on a $1,200 vehicle. Anyway, now we're going to flip this over. You know what? Let's start before we do anything with this guitar. Let's talk about some ways we can stay ahead of the game by multitasking. Now... I hope you have the same pet peeve, but do you remember when they started handing these bags out, right? It's like you can't use plastic. It's environmentally irresponsible. So we're going to get you hooked on these bags. I always leave them in the car. I always forget them. And then they have this thing inside, you know, this thing. It's supposed to keep the bottom in place. And I don't... Anyway, I found a way to use this. But back to these. So they get you hooked on these things. You buy more and more of them. And then finally, when you finally figure out, okay, I can use these. I'm going to take them to the store. Then the pandemic hits and you can't use these. So was this really all about getting us to pay for bags in the first place? Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, take this out and I'm going to show you something really cool. So the first thing you're going to do is realize that these quilted bags are great for protecting your guitars. So I want you to take this. I want you to fold it like that and get that crease where you can see where the middle is like that right and i want you to take your chick flick teal scissors and i want you to cut along that line then i want you to take your drill with a bit that's a little bit bigger than the one you use to put screw holes in and then you just make a few holes like this when you get a number of those holes drilled you take your bottle of screws. Spice bottles are great for this and I have one for black screws and one for silver screws. Anyway, these screws, you know I paint them chick flick teal. You know that right? Let me get this stuff out of the way because I know you think I'm lying. You see that? Those didn't just happen. And so I put the screws in this piece of plastic where I drilled those holes, you see that? And then I take 
my can of chick flick teal and I hold it down here and then I spray those. So those are drying while I am doing the project we are going to do. Moving right along. Okay, you see I got the, the neck match booked on the hobo junk pile and the tuners put in. You know that these come out of the factory. No one is there doing anything with these things any more than they have to. I'm going to tell you about something secret. Marvel Mystery Oil. It's a mystery. I know about this stuff from the oil fields. You can use it as an additive. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. This is the best stuff ever. Now you see these tuners have a hole in them right there. Do you see it? It's right there, 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 there. There's six, there's six holes. So we want to lubricate those. So I got an idea. Let's pop this puppy open and go, go no, uh-uh. Got a better way to do it. Remember the fine line applicator that had a means of having a wire in here. So when you got done using your hide glue, remember hide glue, hide glue is heat activated. Uh, it dries slowly. Uh, and you don't want to glob this stuff all over, so you use this fine tip applicator. I did an episode about this and gave you a link, but there it is. It's got that wire when you're all done. If you can actually see, oh, I surprised myself. You put it down there, you slap it like this, and the glue runs back down, ready to go. Nothing, it, it'll work with super glue, but it will also work with, check it out, Marvel Mystery Oil. So before I start working on the back end of this, oh look, fine, fine tip. I just put that right there and I give it a little bit of a, let it run in there. No mess anywhere, check that out. I put that tip right back on there like that. Bingo. These are great. One more time, I'm gonna give you a link below on how to get a set of those and then before we go to work on the tail end of this thing we're going to give this a little action okay i flipped this guitar over we are going to put a graphic and you're going to be really impressed with that but we got a couple of of holes and divots here and we got one right there a big one that we puttied up and now i can take this scraper and I can do this incessantly and then I can do this incessantly or I can take this puppy right here oh check this out the mini belt sander and just lay it across there like that and knock this out quickly now I'm going to turn off the sound so you can see this without hearing this There, what'd you think of that? Hey, you know what? You probably want to link to this down below. I'm sure you do. Alrighty, check below. You got to have one of these. Neck pockets, name it. This thing is awesome. There we go. Ready for the back piece, right? Wrong. This, where the side of the guitar meets the top and bottom is coming apart right here. Not only is it coming apart here, but it is separating from the bottom. And it's going all the way over to there, but it's intermittent. So I got an idea. Why don't we just take this and jam it in here and pry it open. Oh yeah, and I can squirt some glue in there. Hey, guess what, wrong. Inside of here, this is, does not just glue itself together. Inside of here is what's called kerfing. Have you seen this? It sits, and the reason it has these notches in it is so it can bend like that. And on old guitars, it gets really brittle. You're going to see the guitar that this come out of that was built somewhere between 1927 and 1933. Anyway, if you can imagine inside of here, this rides the back underneath the side of the guitar, and this top and bottom respectively glue. This is called kerfing. K-E-R-F-I-N-G. Kerfing. Now when they put kerfing on, what do you think they used? That's right, hide glue. 
Why? Because it's heat activated. So if I want to separate this and this is glued on and it's intermittently glued on, what am I going to have to do to break this loose from the kerfing and re-glue it? Let me see. Maybe I would have to heat it up. So what am I going to use to heat it up? Hey, check this out. It's called an iron. I know none of us know what this is. We're always told you should go to work with an iron shirt. I'm not sure what that means. Anyway, I'm going to plug that iron in and get it hot. And we're going to put it on top of the guitar. Right? Wrong. Now my iron is heating up. And I got a bunch of these. And so I'm just going to pop these open and pry that open. You see that like there? I got that popped open there. And about the time I do that, it's going to crack right there. And I'm not going to get anywhere. Remember, it's heat activated. So what am I going to do? Check these out. These are something else. Hey, Stu Mac, how you doing? Uh, yeah, there's some things you do want to get from Stu Mac. These are one of them. These allow you to go in here like so. And they're very small. And you can do this. And you can do this. You see that? And I can tell where the glue is hung up. So what am I going to do? I, I, I guess I can just force that or push on it. You know what? I don't need to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, since I've got this one pried up a little bit, and I'm going to put that one in there. Because they're graduated, this one is graduated. It gets narrower and wider as you get up here. So it, it, it works to pry open. Now, if I put this iron on here, it's going to light this up on fire. So I can take this and hold it against my iron. You see that back there? You see what I'm doing? Let me slack off this camera. Stop. Where, where's the iron? Yeah, you see? This goes on here. And I don't want to touch it. You know, you can spit on the iron to see if it's hot. But once this little knife heats up, I can slip it in here. And guess what it's going to do? That's right, because it's hot and hide glue does what? Heat activated. This is going to cut loose. And then I can find out where I need to put the glue, you see. Oh, right there. It's all right there. Then I can pop that in there. And then we can just do this, right? Wrong. Time for my next little trick. All right, get ready for cool. This is a Camacho box. This is not a Camacho box. This is from something that is not a Camacho box. And its purpose in life is to be sacrificed. So a Camacho box can become a guitar. I want to show you something called a glue bot. You see this? You see how this comes off? Now watch. If I put this up here, instead of having it dangle all over, if I put this right there, and I put this here, and I squeeze this, watch what happens. You see it's coming out to the tip. Oh, look at that. It lays glue out in a perfect bead. Look at that. And then when I let go, watch. Boom, the glue sucks right back in and drains right down here. There is no shaking. There is no quaking. And when I'm done, I put that back on there. What does that have to do with this project? Well, guess what? I have a baby bot, glue bot. Take all this off of here if I can get it off of here. Oh, what do you know? I have my flat flush cut pull saw that I can cut my arm off with. If next to a belt sander, if you're going to only have one tool in your shop, this is it. Get one or 50. So guess what? I can take my glue bot with hide glue in it and I can just put it right there and squirt it in there by squeezing it. And when I'm done, I just pop that right back on there and it sits down. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to use the fine line standard tip that I have put hide glue in. There we go. We want to use the one with the needle. There we go. And I can just put that there, stand it up, and then 
run it in here like so. I can go back, pull this out, heat it up again if I need to, and do whatever I need to do until I get my hide glue in here. Again, we don't have to worry about the hide glue setting up really quick because it sets up slowly. That'll give us time to clamp all this, get everything together, clamp it all uh, along the body of the guitar so this pops in. This cannot sit out there and sit out like that. And so we'll clamp it this way and then we'll clamp it this way. Okay, you guys remember the episode that I did about delaminating arch tops? Link right up there. Remember how I use these suction cups to glue everything in? I've got that mounted flush right there. It's popping into there. The glue is going to stick to the kerfing. So if I take a little bit of this glue right along that line right there, like so, what ends up happening is I take my wet suction cup, remember I start back here, and I just push down, and it will push that glue right down into there. Remember, you want to start back here and push. If you, if you push down and then pop it up, the same suction that pushes the glue in will cause the glue to pop back out. See, just like that. Boom. And then we're going to crank that down. I'm going to turn this over here like this. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And we are going to clamp the other way then. Like so. So I've got to clamp this way. I've popped everything in. I still have this knife here. I'm going to put my hide glue down in there, like so. You see how it runs in there? These things are awesome. And then we take our su suction cup, pop this out like this, and push our glue in there like so. You see I'm starting way back here. And pushing it in. Painter's tape is awesome. You notice I can put it like so and then put it on my clamp, pop it up there like that so I don't mar anything. I'm going to put this clamp up here towards the end. I want to push it off to the side a little bit like that so when I tighten this up I can watch the hide glue press out and as I tighten it up again I'm going to take my suction cup and work that glue down in there like so and then just tighten that up a little bit I'm going to do the same thing with a couple more clamps here and we'll be good to go okay last thing I want to tell you about clamping this stuff is when you're tightening these clamps down if something starts to feel like it's giving right here and pushing in like so, your kerfing might be bad. And if this is dropped off and you're hearing stuff rattling around, when you shake one of these guitars, it's either a brace that's going across the body or it's the kerfing popping loose. And you want to check that out. Don't ignore that kind of stuff and hope it's going to get better because it won't. And then down the road you'll find out that something you could have stopped from getting worse is not going to get any better by itself believe that or not so we're going to leave this set up but we got a little issue right there you see that remember the episode case of the tore up tailpiece link up there as usual we did the back end of one where everything kept popping out of here we got some work to do here and i'm going to show you a couple fancy little tools i got to come in real handy hey i got a question for you whoever came up with this idea phillips come on use a phillips don't use these this is not going to work out for you so we're going to replace that the next thing is are we going to put this screw even if it's a phillips 
down in that same hole. No, that's a recipe for disaster. We're going to reinforce this. So I've got a piece of this eighth inch doweling. And we're just going to pop that down in there like so. This is 74 feet uh, long. I have to have one of those um, flags that cranes use. So airplanes doesn't hit it on top of it. But what are we going to use for this? Yeah, we're going to use hide glue and what are we going to put it on with that's right our fine line applicator standard tip so we're just going to pop some glue down in there like so and fill that puppy up and put that down in there like that and we're going to let it sit for 24 hours because hide glue dries very slowly right okay i've cut this off so the planes don't hit it we do have a lot of air traffic out here in the Acton Metropolis area. And of course, because I have a fine tip applicator, I can make sure that that hole has glue in it everywhere, like so. It will not be loose tomorrow, I guarantee you. Okay, you see that right there? Do you know what that is? Yeah, that's for one of those wooden strap pins that is kind of tapered and you put it in there and you turn it. Are we going to do that? No. We're going to put a piece of dowel in there. Oops. We're going to put a piece of dowel in there. No. What if I told you that I had a piece of wood that came from where Fred McDowell was recorded by both Alan Lomax and George Mitchell? What if I told you that? What if I told you that I could just drop that right in there and glue that up good and that way I start off with a lot of mojo and some good wood instead of that phony peg that Sears Roebuck put in here uh, in 1953. Cody, you are the man, dude. You are the man. Thank you. We're going to cut that off after it's dried and we'll put... A real pin end on there so it doesn't come off and we can put our strap without worrying about it. Now while we're waiting for glue to dry what if I told you that this piece of wood right here those aren't carpenter beetles I'll get to that in a minute what if I told you this piece of wood came from the house that Alan Wilson who helped Sun House relearn how to play guitar in 1964 that this came from the property on which Alan Wilson died. What if I told you this piece of wood came from the grounds of Reuben Lacey's church, who Sun House did not like to hear glass slide being played when Sun House was a preacher and then a blues player and then a preacher and then whatever he was over and over, repeat the story. But what if I wanted to put these pieces of these in a neck. I did an episode called Embedding Relics. It's up there. And here's what you do. You have a Forstner bit that drills a hole. Like so. Bingo. Then you have a plug cutter. One of these. Now, I want to tell you something. If you ever rip your cabinet door off and the screw cuts loose, you simply take this, the Forstner bit, drill the screw out, take this get a piece of wood if you don't want to go get doweling and all that you just get a piece of wood you cut a plug and this fits right in there like that same size so if I want to cut a plug of this wood I just drill it out like this it pulls a plug out that's the same size as this a little bit smaller and I just put it in you need a set of plug cutters I have different sizes you can't live without these and then I can cut stuff like this whether you have relic wood or not you know the day is coming where you're gonna drill the wrong hole in your headstock and the tuners are gonna be off and you're gonna be going Ken told me to get a set of plug cutters because then you just cut a plug whatever you want and pop a new one in there, sand it off, and then cover it up with some graphic, and the day is saved, and people will think you're some renaissance man like me. Anyway, Forstner bits, plug cutters, gotta have them. All right, 
I think that's it. What did I forget? Oh, almost forgot this. You don't want to leave this sitting here plugged in. Ah! Because you might burn your shop down. You don't want that. So you want to unplug that. Isn't it funny? I know how to run a crane, but I do not know how to run an iron. I guess that's the way life is supposed to be. Anyway, we're going to unplug that. And we are going to wait for all this to dry. And then I will put the graphic on the back. You are going to be in complete and total disamazement when you see this. And it'll look like a few seconds, but actually a lot of hours. Anyway, I'll catch up with you in a little bit once this dries. All right, we are good to go. The back is done. Uh, the top and the bottom are attached to the sides. We've got wood in here now that we can screw into. Hey, deck screw hater, all for you, brother. Um, got the tailpiece back on. Used a piece of the cracker tin that we're going to use for this piece that's going to hold our pickup. Um, I started drilling holes for um, input jacks and volume controls and yeah, and I also got the graphic on the back and for a hobo guitar I think you might need this it's a map and it might come in handy if you're on the Greyhound bus go Greyhound or riding a train whether you're paying or or uh, sitting in a box car freezing to death anyway um, I'm happy the way with the way this turned out um, the sound hole here you stick your hand in here and I'll tell you what this fine line applicator bottle with this hide glue and this sound hole if you got anything that's rattling inside of your guitar usually it's one of these braces that's going across here somewhere and if there's a time uh, to do it don't wait uh, you can feel the curfing and everything through the sound hole and if that's the case you just take this stuff and put it under that long needle helps you out and um, yeah I can't beat this so I hope I gave you a few simple ideas that are going to help you out and we're getting close I'm about ready to put a bridge on this thing and start wiring it up and then we're going to see how it sounds because it ain't much of a guitar but I think it'll clear out the house on 10 that's for sure so don't forget to give me a like thanks um, for your support and don't forget to look down in the description line because I'm going to give you links to a lot of these gadgets and products so hey I will see you next time